Between 1971 and 1973, Ajax of Amsterdam won the European Cup three years in a row. They triumphed with a revolutionary tactical system where players and positions were fluidly interchangeable. It was free, it was flowing, and it was christened Total Football. Theirs was a team of stellar names, Kroll, Naiskins, Kaiser, and of course, Cruyff. It was one of the finest teams ever assembled, a team that influenced many others and left a legacy that is still resonating today. On the 30th of May 1973, Ajax beat Juventus to claim their third successive European Cup. Just a decade earlier, such success was unimaginable. Ajax at that time was still, still in their organization, an amateur club. Before Rinus Michels arrived, it was just an, an, a fun club, more social. It had nothing to do with professional football. He didn't have directors, he didn't have, no, 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 there was a president. And then, yeah, people who did it in their, in their spare time. What happened when uh, Rinus Michels uh, came in was a complete different way of thinking. We had to get rid of this semi-professionalism. We had to go fully professional. I never forget uh, what Michels told me when he arrived at the club. He's, because he came from, a, from an amateur club, JOS, and he's always told me JOS was three times better organized than Ajax at that time. We had some very good quality players, but they all were semi-professional. So people were working or training in the, after, in the, in the afternoon. And then Piet Kaiser was the first professional and I was the second, which means you were not working. You could train during the day. So physically you could do things. Uh, weak things, you could train much more. It became clear to me at that time that the main role of the coach was to continuously work on the performance levels and potential of your players. I was the one uh, who was uh, totally in the way of thinking of Michaels at that time. He had the luck that he uh, got the talent of Johan Cruyff, who could bring over his philosophy into the pitch where he has no control. The discipline within the tactics, the discipline within uh, the, the controlling the whole things. In addition, to develop a new playing style, one which flowed from your own ideas of how football should be played. So the ideas of Michels with the sauce of Cruyff over it, you know, made it all happen. After you, you saw people getting better, creator. And then it started, uh, started to, uh, to show. In 1966, Ajax won the league by seven points. But it was in the following season's European Cup that their fame began to spread. Besiktas were crushed before Ajax met English champions Liverpool in the second round. It was so misty that evening. Nobody could see anything. Ajax saw enough to race into a surprising and commanding lead. When it was 3-0, I thought it was half-time. I walked off the pitch towards the changing room. But when I was back at the tunnel, someone shouted, what are you doing? I said, it's half-time. No, it's not, they said. So I walked back onto the pitch. I got the ball. I passed two or three English players and crossed the ball for a goal. 4-0. A Dutch team win against an English team was something outrageous that didn't exist. At home we won 5-1, at away we draw 2-2, which was 
fantastic uh, result, but the game we played was totally different than they were used to. The ideas of Michals were producing dramatic progress. The 1967 and 68 league titles were added, and a year later the team reached the European Cup final. But on the big stage, Ajax were found wanting. At that time was uh, in Madrid against Milan, and uh, we lost there. Not because we were worse, but the experience was not there. Uh, we made some Giles' mistakes, but you have to go through these mistakes, otherwise you could never, uh, you could never understand what it is. You had to learn from it. Milan surged to a 4-1 victory, but lessons had been learned. The following season saw Ajax make minimal changes, the one of these would prove significant. The promotion of Ruud Kroll to the first 11. We had a good team, with one superstar and five or six world-class, or at least European-class players, and that's what made us unique. Michels finally had the team he wanted, and they were playing the way he wanted. Ajax had developed a new style of football, and it would fundamentally influence thinking in the game. Attackers and midfielders would defend, and defenders would build up an attack. And it all happened with a constant fluidity. So, of course, you could call this total football. We had two fullbacks, Kroll and Sobia. They were really quick. One on one, you had no chance against them. In central defence, we had a Yugoslavian, Vasovic, and Barry Hulshoff, who was 1 metre 90 tall. Any balls into the box, he would win the headers. In midfield, we had Ari Hahn, Naiskins and Muren. And in attack, Kaiser, Cruyff and Svart. If you talk with players from that time, they say that Cruyff actually changed the style of playing because you saw that Cruyff was actually more and more searching for a position in the team where he could get less kicks. So he, he some dropped to the midfield, he went to the left side. Actually, Cruyff was the first total football player, just to protect himself. And from that situation, it came like, you know, players took it over. They said, well, if he can do it that way, why can't we do it anyway? This new way of playing was impressive, but Ajax wouldn't be the first Dutch team to triumph in the European Cup. Final was not Ajax, but final is the first Dutch uh, team that won the European Cup. A team like Ajax became better because of, 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 of Feyenoord. Feyenoord's 1970 European Cup win spurred their rivals to excel. And then the great period started in 71. It was the hippie time, it was Woodstock. They already, when they started the game, they were 2-0 ahead, just the way they looked. In the European Cup, KS-17 and Torre Tirana of Albania were beaten 4-2 in round one. They came in and they, you know, they were not afraid for no one. In round two, Switzerland's Basel were thrashed 5-1. There was no weak point in that team. It was a free spirit time, and it was a free spirit team. In the quarterfinals, Celtic were defeated 3-1. Rock bands like the Beatles and the Stones at that time, they had the discipline to make good music, and they had the discipline to play good football. My quality was a special quality, but if you see the quality of Kaiser, it was special too. Kaiser was on the score sheet in the semi-final against Atletico Madrid as a 1-0 away defeat was turned around spectacularly at home. It was more a team performance where you kept all these quality together to make it as a team. Atletico were dismantled 3-0. Ajax had reached the European Cup final for the second time in three years. The final would be played in London. Ajax faced Greek champions Panathinaikos, but would do so without Ruud Kroll, who had broken his leg. Despite this, the Dutchmen remained the favourites, and the weight of expectation was felt by all. Feyenoord had already won the European Cup. I think that result put extra pressure on our club to do well. So there was more pressure on us to get the result. Not just for the coach, 
but for the players too. After losing in the 1969 final, Ajax were determined not to make the same mistakes, and any lingering doubts were removed after just five minutes, thanks to Dick Van Dirk. By half time, it should have been three or four nil to Ajax. Under severe pressure, Panathinaikos held out until three minutes from full time, when Ari Hahn finally found the crucial second goal. At last, Ajax were European champions. That night was the culmination of many years of hard work. The way the players moved within the team was extraordinary. It was a joyous moment, but the celebrations were tempered by the news that this would be Michels' final game as Ajax coach. By winning on Wembley, uh, the first uh, European Cup against the penalty Nikos, I think re Michels realized, okay, you know, this, the climax has, I have reached climb with the team. We have to get rid of each other. To, to keep the peace. Michels was, dus een, een, Michels was a nice man, enough man, uh, uh, heel, but when it came to work, man, he was very strict. In, in werk was he heel strict. And then came Kovacs, who was the other way around, was an easygoing guy, was a father type. And he got with a team that had so much discipline that actually he just need, they needed somebody who created some, some space in, in, in the mentalities. Stefan Kovac had won a league and two cups in Romania with Stoja Bucharest, and he soon made an impression in his early days at Ajax. He had a lot of connections in international football. For example, whoever we played against, he knew exactly how they would play. And he knew exactly who would play. He was very well informed. The team, with Cruyff as a leader, knew exactly how far they could go. So it was a perfect match at that time. By March 1972, Ajax had reached the quarterfinals of the European Cup once again. This time they dismissed Arsenal, winning 3-1 on aggregate. It became more free, it became more created even then. Everything, there came an outburst of everything they had in their bodies. Creative in attack, Ajax were equally resolute in defense. We would play for a nil-nil draw, such as against Benfica, away in the semi-finals. We won 1-nil at home and drew nil-nil away. And that was an important factor in our team, that we were able to do that. We could attack well, we could defend well, and of course, that was the basis for a good team. Ajax were in the final again, but faced formidable opponents, Italy's Inter Milan. They had some great players, like Mazzola and Jair. They were very accomplished players, and they had a good team. The problem we had was that Ajax were just beginning a period of dominance. Meanwhile, our winning cycle was coming to an end. The game would be played at the home of Ajax's bitter rivals. It was in Rotterdam, and Feyenoord was still our biggest enemy. And what could be nicer than winning the European Cup in their house? Physically, they were very strong. Normally, players who are very strong physically don't have great feet. They run a lot, but they make a lot of mistakes. Not Ajax. All of their players had great feet. There were two different styles. We had the initiative in the game, but you could see that Inter, on the counter-attack, were very dangerous. I remember that after half an hour, we'd only had one shot on goal. They always had the ball. It was a style of play that no one had ever seen before. So they surprised us. And of course, they had Johan Cruyff, one of the best players ever. And he punished us with a goal. Cruyff was the superstar, like Maradona, Messi, Pele, and we had five or six other world-class players too, like Neskins, Svart and Kaiser. And with 12 minutes remaining, it was the superstar who settled the victory. I think every team that saw that final, the 2-0 with Johan Cruyff scoring twice, 
saw that final, thought, oh my God, what, what, what can we do against it? Ajax had ample reason to celebrate, as well as the European Cup, they'd won the league and the domestic cup. An incredible treble that had seen them lose just once in 48 games. And in September of 1972, Ajax became champions of the world. Independiente of Argentina were beaten 4-1 over two legs in the Intercontinental Cup. It had been the most successful year in the club's history, one which saw them lift four trophies. 1973 was begun imperiously as Ajax swept aside Cup Winners' Cup champions Rangers in what became known as the Super Cup. And in March, they met Bayern Munich in the European Cup quarterfinals. In those years, Ajax was simply outstanding. They had some great players. Ajax were a strong team, whereas we were just developing. We were in a transitional period and bringing in young players like Paul Breitner and Uli Hoeneß. The Ajax team had remained largely unchanged. The young striker Johnny Rep was in the side against Bayern. The first half saw the Dutchman struggle to break through. Patience was required. Of course, we were waiting for the first goal, and it came at a good moment for us. Ari Hahn gave Ajax the lead eight minutes into the second half. The German defence crumbled. Four nil, and we were flying. After that, it was easy for us. The semi-final was against Real Madrid, but Ajax shone both home and away. The team grew. We had confidence, which kept growing and growing. And we continued to play good football. That's typical Amsterdam. They come in, and they just say, "Come on, man, come on and get it." That's the way they, their attitude when they were on the pitch. A 3-1 aggregate win and the third consecutive European Cup final. This time the opponents were Juventus. For that game in Belgrade, it was really hot. Really hot. The climate didn't suit us at all. But despite the heat, Ajax scored after just five minutes. It was an early goal. Blankenberg crossed for Johnny Rapp. We scored very early in the game. We played to protect our lead, rather than trying to score more goals. Perhaps that was our error, to play that way in that game. We dominated the game, but Juventus created chances on the counter-attack, and we got lucky once or twice. It had been unconvincing, but Ajax held on to win 1-0. Three consecutive European Cups was a magnificent achievement, and the latest heralded a new hero. Ajax had already won two European Cups, but for me, it was my first European Cup final. And then I scored that goal. So, of course, I was delighted. But I didn't feel that the rest of the players were as happy as I was, or as happy as they were when winning against Panathinaikos or Inter Milan. The novelty had kind of worn off for them by then. The celebrations and dominance couldn't last forever. There's always a problem when you have a success that uh, one general becomes four or five generals. The European champions were about to lose their coach and their captain. Firstly, Stefan Kovac left to work with the French national team. But suggestions that Ajax's talismanic on-field leader would soon be departing for Barcelona were the talk of football. I always looked in the papers to Barcelona. There was no particular reason. I don't think Cruyff could be kept anymore. At some point, the money from Barcelona was going to lure him away. 
With rumours circulating around Cruyff's transfer, the Ajax team met before the season to elect its captain. We did that every year. Before each season started, we always chose a captain. Who's going to be captain? They choose for Piet Kaiser, and that for Johan it was the end. Because he said, listen, everybody's focused on me. I'm getting, if it goes wrong, I get all the beatings from the outside world. So it's ridiculous for to take another captain. We made our choice, though it wasn't very well explained to the media. It was a choice for the team, and that's all there was to it. And he saw it as a sign from the players that they didn't trust him anymore and they, you know, they had enough of him. And so he said, OK, if you don't believe in me, I'm gone. And he was gone in three weeks. The following season, Ajax were knocked out by CSKA Sofia in the second round of the European Cup. The team also went on to lose the league title to rivals Feyenoord and were knocked out of the Dutch Cup by PSV Eindhoven. After Cruyff left for Barcelona, we saw that we weren't as good anymore. But then, maybe you'd expect that after three European Cup finals, things would slow down a little. From such lofty heights, it was a dramatic fall. But there was no doubting the effect the Ajax team of the early 70s had on future teams, both at home and abroad. The honours board shows a staggering 16 trophies won from 1966 to 1974. But Ajax of Amsterdam had an impact on football that reaches far beyond cups and titles. I think Ajax revolutionised football. And later, with the national team as well. Everyone liked it. We had a different philosophy. We had an under philosophy. Ajax way of playing was transforming the Brazilian style into a, a European face. It's free spirit, it's fun, it's scoring goals, it's entertaining the public. They were a brilliant team. They were the side which began what we call total football. In 1973, when we lost against Ajax in the quarterfinals, we started to think that we too could play this way. We definitely learned from them. Ajax put out the perfect side, and they had a similar system to the one used by Barcelona today. They looked unbeatable, and they were unbeatable. If you've got a game where you want the ball, what are you going to do with the ball? You try to attack. And if you try to attack, you try to score a goal. They were the best team of the decade. 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, all these summers. A Dutch team was in the final with Benfica in the 60s and, and Manchester United at the end of the 60s. But, but Ajax was definitely the team of the 70s. We had a great team. We had some great players and that's, uh, that's why it went well.